Today's podcast is a crossover with our Football for All podcast, which we've designed for your youth football community, for your coaches, parents, and commissioners. But we also feel this has high value to the high school coach as well. So I I do like putting these crossover episodes here. And today we talk with Zach Martin, who is the offensive guard for the Dallas Cowboys, Uh, has done an excellent job throughout his career, becoming one of the best guards in the NFL. And he comes to the show to talk to us about being a multi-sport athlete and the advantages of that. And I know, you know, we talk about those things all the time. All those stats come up on the draft about multi-sport athletes. But I think hearing Zach talk about it here really cements that idea that it is good for our athletes to play other sports. I know linemen typically have been relegated to maybe throwing shot in the spring, or maybe they wrestle, or some of them just stay in the weight room. But I think Zach here really attributes a lot of his success in football to being a basketball player. It actually was his first love. And he talks about all that, these ideas here, as well as playing from the two-point stance. Check out all we're doing for high school football in techniques in blocking, defeating blocks, and tackling at footballdevelopment.com. And check out our football development model, which this podcast, uh, the Football for All podcast, has been developed around. It's at fdm.usafootball.com. Enjoy this quick podcast with Dallas Cowboys offensive lineman, Zach Martin. You take youth football, but then you fast forward 20 years. What that guy's going to remember 20 years after youth football are moments. We want kids who love football to have the opportunity to play football. There's opportunities, no matter your gender, no matter your race, no matter your background. There's no specific box. Looking at, you know, whether it's playing flight football or modified version of the game, I think it's so smart. We're shaping the whole person. We want to make sure that you're a successful person on and off the field. Positive football experiences. So they keep playing and keep getting better. This is Football for All. On today's Football for All podcast, we're joined by offensive guard for the Dallas Cowboys, Zach Martin. Zach, it's great to have you here on the podcast today. I appreciate you having me. Zach, we're going to talk about a number of things, and the focus for you, some key pillars in our football development model. We're going to focus a little bit on the multi-sport aspect of it, and we're going to talk some technique as well and and get a little bit into uh, offensive line play. And we had the opportunity to have your brother Nick on the podcast last week, and we talked to him a little bit about, you know, how the game was fun for him and learned a little bit about, uh, you know, your family background. But I think uh, we want to touch on some of those things again and at least get your perspective from it. Football is an important part of your family. Three brothers, all three of you played in college. Your oldest brother, Josh, a Division II football player. You and Nick played at Notre Dame. Uh, Nick is now with the Texans. You're with the Cowboys. Uh, your dad played at the University of Kentucky. So football has really always been a part of the Martin family. Um, yet at the same time, you know, something we talked about is that there were other aspects of everything you guys would do as well. But talk to us a little bit about, I guess, growing up in that football family. Yeah, you know, uh, football, obviously, like you said, was a huge part of, of our household. Uh, my dad played in college and was always a youth coach of ours. And, um, you know, I, I've always loved the game. I'm not – I, I'm not going to lie and say it was my first love probably in sports. I think basketball when I was younger was kind of my first love. But uh, the more I played and the more I started to develop through the years, I kind of figured that that was kind of going to be my sport uh, to take it beyond high school. And, um, you know, I kind of dove, dove right into it and, um, you know, learned the game more, uh, learned the, the little details of the game and, and uh, what could help me along the way. And, um, you know, it's been a huge part of my life uh, up to this point and, and hopefully for uh, years into the future here. I think what's neat about your football experience and, you know, having the chance to get to know your dad over the last few years, I know football is very important to him, but um, it wasn't necessarily something that, you know, your dad was going to push you guys into and have these huge expectations that you're going to go on and, you know, play in college and then play in the NFL that your dad let that love for the game develop and really even nurtured that multi-sport aspect of things that you guys did a lot of things growing up, not just football. 
yeah, I think he encouraged us to, to do as much as we could, you know, um, uh, I, I, we were always, uh, in basketball. We were always in baseball. We were always in soccer when we were young and he gave us that freedom to kind of figure out, uh, you know, what we, what we wanted to do and what we, uh, what we enjoyed playing. Um, I think obviously some, uh, parents might think you play college football, you're going to push your kid to play football and train for football all year round. But, um, we were able to, to play those different sports, um, kind of have some freshness each each uh, different season. Um, when you come back to to say football or basketball, and um, and then obviously as we got older, uh, I started to focus more on uh, myself. I was a football and basketball player, and then um, obviously uh, ultimately played football. But um, we had that freedom, and I thought it, you know I thought it was uh, a great way not to only. Um, obviously you meet different people in different sports, but also give you a chance to see um, what fits best for you, what sport does. And, um, you know, also just gives you a chance to go out there and have fun uh, with your buddies every day. Well, I think that's an important part of growing up as an athlete is, is going out there and having fun and kind of that free, free play aspect of it too. I see so many videos today with well-intentioned parents and I'm, I'm not being critical about what parents want for their children but um, I think maybe a, a misconception that you need to have that youngster do what the guys in the NFL are doing now and I'll see videos of you know kids pulling sleds or flipping tires and you know doing all these things that the older athletes do as they start to progress and develop themselves physically but I guess I just don't see enough of kids getting out and playing. I know, know for us, learning the game, shoot, we did that on our own at first. We did that in the, in the front yard, in the, in the, on the playground, in the street, wherever we could find a place that we could play some ball. That's what we were doing. And, you know, I, I think in talking to a lot of guys who make it to your level, they've had that experience that it, it wasn't this push from day one to be the elite athlete and to train for an NFL career. It was to go out and play and have fun and learn to be an athlete. Right, exactly. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't agree more. I think, um, you know, I think people are obviously caught up and listen, everyone wants their kid to, to be successful and, and to get a scholarship and, and do all that. But at the end of the day, the, you know, football and, and these other sports, it, it's a game at its purest form. It, it's a game. And, um, you know, I think at that age, you're obviously teaching the fundamentals. You're allowing kids to learn uh, more about the sport. But, you know, a lot of times you see kids, they're going out there and they want to they make new friends. They want to hang out with their buddies. They want to they just run around and have fun. So I think the, the purest form of the game is that. And I think when uh, people realize that, it becomes more fun for the kids and they want to put more time into it. They want to put more effort into it. Um, and it really takes care of itself. So I, I'm a huge proponent of, of, of letting them, uh, you know, obviously try different things and also, um, find in their way. And I think you'll see how much, um, you know, how much, kids will, will want to put more time into it uh, when they have the freedom to, to still treat it as a game. Yeah, I, I think the other aspect of this too is we can't pigeonhole kids at a young age that you are going to play this position or that position. Well, I mean, it's, you know, looking at your dad and then the Martin boys, it's pretty safe to say you guys would eventually end up playing on the line of scrimmage. But, you know, I think in what we're looking you know, at with the football development model, especially early on, some position sampling. And I think it's it's good to be able to do those things to develop that athleticism, but also to develop that understanding of the game that I, we don't need to take our our six-year-old or eight-year-old and, and have them out every day blocking the sled and doing those things yet. We could teach them the, the fundamentals of the game without pigeonholing him that this is what you're going to be 10 years down the line. Right, and I think that uh, kind of goes back to what I was saying is, you know, everyone wants their kid to be successful, but it's not just like, hey, you wake up and say, you know, I'm going to take my kid out and run them every day and they're going to be successful players. There, there's an evolution to the game like anything else. I think you start, you know, you start uh, young and you learn the fundamentals, and when you learn those, you move up and you learn some new techniques. You start using, um, you know, I'm an offensive lineman. I've, I've been a big guy, so I, I've always been an offensive lineman, but um, – you know, you start, you start to learn more aspects about the game. You start to learn how to use your hands. You start to learn how to pull. You start to learn how to do all that different kind of stuff. Um, but that all stems from learning the basics 
at a young age and drilling those basics over and over until you feel comfortable to move on to the next thing. Well, and then you look at it too, and you talked about basketball being kind of your first love in this, that there's certainly a lot of things that you learned in being a basketball player that carried over probably to help you further develop your skills and progress you uh, into playing at higher levels because of, of those skills and athleticism developed in basketball. Right. I mean, uh, offensive line play is all about, you know, mirroring a defender, you know, getting in that low posture. Um, and that's what basketball is. You're in a defensive stance. You're mirroring your defender back and forth constantly up and down the basketball court. So that, for me, that was a smooth transition. And I'm playing offensive line. And even the older as I got, as I got and the competition started to pick up, those are just natural movements that I've done my whole life on the basketball court, getting down in a good posture, having balance between my feet and mirroring a defender um, is something I did, you know, obviously through football and basketball. Now, your, your brother talked about maybe getting a little bit more serious about football and understanding that that could be uh, a big part of his future. You know, sometime in, in the middle of high school, for you, when did that start to click that college football might, might be something you were interested in or a pathway for you? I think, uh, yeah, early in high school, I would say probably around my sophomore year, I, I was I was a solid basketball player, but, you know, I was a six foot three center and, um, you know, there's not many six foot three centers that play <laughs> college basketball and beyond. But, um, you know, I started to excel at football. I started, um, I played D-line also, so I played O-line and D-line. Um, got to play on the varsity team my sophomore year and I started to really excel. And I started to really enjoy the little details of the game and that's when I kind of fell in love with that and and kind of uh you know hit the ground running with football you know for you and a lot of times maybe kids don't realize this growing up or even parents as they have their kids in in other sports when did you start to see that carryover between sports that you know what you were doing especially for you again being basketball being a, a, a love for you that that basketball was translating to what you were doing on a football field well, I think for me, actually, it was more when I got into college, um, you know, for our, uh, like my high school, we, we ran the ball virtually every play. So we're doing a bunch of ton of run blocking and all that kind of stuff. And then I move on to college at Notre Dame and I start playing left tackle. So, you, you know, you're in a lot more space. Um, you're constantly setting their space between you and the defender. You got to mirror that guy. Um, so I think that moving on to college and having more of that kind of um, offense, and those things, it was just kind of a natural transition for me. I didn't, I didn't, uh, obviously there's a lot of things I had to work on, but those basic movements and the idea of, uh, you know, if he goes this way, I have to step with this foot just came natural uh, to me through playing, uh, I think really basketball um, throughout high school. When looking at that, you know, p having played tackle in college, especially a left tackle, uh, you start to play more and more from that two-point stance. Um, or even if you do get into a three-point stance, it's a lot different than, you know, some of the stuff, especially we learn early on in our, our playing careers about – a stance and getting out of a stance and, and actually having some of the hip mobility right. or, or body control to be able to play from that position. And I know we talk a lot, of, um, especially at the younger ages, that the best way to do this is to play from a two-point stance. And, you know, you're, you're somebody who studies the technique and knows that you need to use your hands to uh, not only play the game safer, but to play it more effectively against – some some physical specimens who are out there against you right yeah no i uh i completely agree and like what you said back to the two-point stance like um you know i think once you learn how to, how your body moves um like you said you start early out with a three-point stance you know you're all your weights forward and you pretty much the only way you can go is straight ahead well as the older you get and the game progresses you know defenses are moving guys are better athletes um, and usually when you're an offensive lineman usually better athletes than you so it's, it's, it's learning how to um, balance your weight and then moving efficiently 
um, while you're in that stance. So, you know, you talk about a two-point stance. Um, I know when I first started trying two-point stance, it's it's much harder uh, to kind of balance that weight rather than having your 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 hand down on the ground and you can kind of lean back and forth. Really, the the higher you get, the you learn how your weight distribution needs to be in your stance, uh, your balance of that distribution, so you're not giving away. Hey, I'm running to the right, so I'm loading up all my weight on the left. Um, it, it's it's figuring out what's the most balanced way to move the most efficiently to catch the defense off guard. So, um, you know, that's obviously something that comes, you know, that's, that's, that's moving up the, the, the ladder of the evolution. You know, obviously you start in your basic stance and you, you, you learn, you feel your weight in your feet. And like, for example, if I'm moving right, I'm going to put my weight on my left, but learning how to just do that real small. So the defense doesn't see that. And then you're fired out of your stance. So learning that balance um, really is, is a huge part of of uh, your stance. Now, you know, you started early on and having, you know, both at the youth level and then high school level playing from a three-point stance, a definitely a different uh, style of blocking that was being taught back then. But, but now, and you and I talked about this, I think, last summer when we were uh, at the NCAA just shooting some things for USA football that um, – you know, being able to play with the hips and hands actually starts from more of that balanced stance rather than having, you know, all your weight out over your front hand or taking those big first steps where everything's going forward that um, being able to play more powerfully comes from some of the things that you will learn in a two-point stance. Right, and I think, you know, I've I've had camps, I've worked camps um, where you're trying to, you know, and in two hours, let's say, you're trying to progress and teach these kids something, but then you get out there and the first thing we do is stance and start, and they get that in a stance and, uh, you know, you spend half your time just, just, just tweaking the stances to get it right so kids can move efficiently. And I think that just shows that, you know, obviously there's an ending point that everyone dreams of going to, right? But if you don't take the time to do the details to, to learn those little things, then, you know, you, you can't progress just like anything in life. So, you know, I know for myself, when we, when we get some kids that come out there and they're in a good stance, ready to go, it's like, God, this is great. We can actually teach them something. Whereas, you know, the other half of the time we're teaching most, most kids, all right, this is how you get in a stance. It's how you balance your weight. And then all of, all of a sudden the time's up. So, there there's it's it's just like anything you you start from the ground and you work your way up and i think there's too many times that people just want to get to the top of the pyramid right now um you know it's still obviously it's a game but there's still a ton of work that has to go into it if you want to be be good at it shifting gears here and kind of just looking at how you've been developed as the whole athlete the whole person and you've been at uh, you, you were at a great high school uh, obviously an incredible college program at Notre Dame and now with you know what uh, a, a lot of people hold in high regard as a, a franchise in the NFL America's team, right the Dallas Cowboys that um, you don't get to that level if you don't develop those things off the field as well talk to us a little bit about how those aspects of Zach Martin have been developed at you know the various levels yeah, well, I, I think, um, you know, off the field, listen, if, you, if you're in trouble all the time, you're going to be able to play. So uh, I think my dad always said to me best is, you know, surround yourself with people that have similar, you know, similar goals, similar dreams and, 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 as you. Because, um, you know, I know I would be nowhere without the people in my life, my family, my friends. But at the same time, those, those same family and friends were pushing me along the way. So that's always – what I try to do, I try to surround myself with people that one have my best interest at heart and two have similar goals and aspirations as I do. Cause I know they're going to push me uh, to where I go. I want to go. Um, you know, my brother's a good example. We're training this summer together and to see him in here work that, that only pushes me to that next level. Like, Hey, this guy's, this guy's going, going all out right here. I, I better, I better pick it up and, and match his intensity. Cause I know that's what it takes to get to where I want to be. I know you've had some coaches who, who have been influential in that regard as, as well. Talk to us a little bit about, 
you know, what you saw as some of the best aspects of those coaches in, in helping develop the whole person, not just that athlete on the field? Right. Well, I, I, the best coaches that I've had have been, one, they've been great teachers. And I think, two, they, they've held me accountable all the way. So, you know, even start from my young and my dad, you know, he's, he's uh, probably the best example for me is that he, he held me accountable and he pushed me. He wasn't, you know, I, I was always a pretty good player, but, you know, my best coaches that I already had never let me, um, you know, rest on the fact that I was a pretty good player. They always pushed me to take that next step. I think, uh, you know, and I've been around it too. I, I've been around coaches that, that have good players that, that don't want to, you know, they don't want to hurt the good players feeling. They don't want to, they don't want to get on the good player, but um, you know, I know for me, the best coaches I have have been the ones that have been on me the most and have pushed me the most. And I have, you know, I have great examples through the years. I have, uh, you know, my dad and then Coach Lorenzano at Bishop Chittard was the same way. I had um, Harry Heastan in Notre Dame who was my line coach. And, um, you know, he may be the best example of, of that out of anyone that I had is that, you know, although I was a pretty good player in college, he, he never, never let me, let me, uh, let me rest on that. He was always pushing me, always pushing me because he could see that I, uh, I had that next step to take. Zach, to wrap things up, you're pretty well aware of all the different things we're doing at USA Football with the football development model. And, you know, uh, I, of course, work with uh, your dad on that team and, and people who are helping develop that. Um, you know, looking at the entire package of what we put together, what are the most exciting aspects of that? You know, that as you look at it and think about how we're getting that next generation of, of athletes and football players prepared for the future. Yeah, I think it's great to, to you know, you got to have advocates to push back to the basics. Um, you know, at the end of the day, football is a game that always comes back to the basic fundamentals, no matter what level you're at. I still, to this day, that'll be if I if I have an off game or anything, the first thing I write in my notes from that game is back to the basics. And if I, for me, if I just get back to the basic fundamentals, that usually cleans up uh, a lot of my game. So it's cool to see uh, you guys push that because um, really at the end of the day, the foundation of this game is on, is on the, the basic fundamentals. Zach, I appreciate you taking time with us again and best of luck to you and the Cowboys in 2020. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for your interest and support in the football development model. We cannot create a stronger sport without you. Head to fdm.usafootball.com to get involved. We'll see you next time on the Football for All podcast.